the sarcomere. A sarcomere is the functional unit of muscle, of skeletal muscle. This is going to be where contraction takes place. So a sarco in a in a myofiber in a skeletal muscle cell, you might have 10,000 sarcomeres stacked end to end. As each sarcomere shortens, as it contracts, the entire muscle then is able to undergo contraction. So as we look at a sarcomere, um, a couple things to keep in mind before we dive in too much on how it actually works, right? Um, a sarcomere goes from what they call Z-line to Z-line. So when I say there's 10,000 of them, right? It's from here to here is one, and you might have lots of this repeating. And that's what gives skeletal muscle in particular that striated appearance, these repeating bands. Now, this is primarily made up of protein. Um, some of these proteins are the actual contractile proteins, and those are actin and myosin. Actin is shown here in pink, and this is considered the thin filament. Now, if you look at actin, what you'll see is what looks like um, maybe two strands of pearls kind of twisted together. The entire actin then, when it's in its filamentous form, is called F-actin. F stands for filamentous, right? It's like a necklace. It, those, each of those strings, though, is made up of individual, what we call G-actin, globular actin subunits, right? Each G-actin, the little yellow part that's kind of hidden here, there we go, is the active site. The active site is where myosin will actually bind. Right? So actin is our thin filament. It is one of our contractile proteins. Your thick filament is called myosin. And myosin ends up being this bundle of proteins that kind of look like golf clubs. That's my best description, right? So just this wrap a bunch of golf clubs together, and that's kind of what you're looking at here um, with myosin. <clears throat> okay, so thick filament and thin filament. You also then have within this sarcomere a series of stabilizing proteins. A couple examples for you here. On myosin, right, and again in our sarcomere, they, they keep the color coding pretty good here. The myosin is here in purple and notice that it's actually attached to those Z lines and that's by one of these um, stabilizing proteins. This one is called titan. Right? So titan is a stabilizing protein that anchors the myosin to that Z line. Right? And again, titan, which is an awesome name for a protein. Right? So that's kind of a, a structural or a stabilizing protein. Um, who was the other one I was thinking of? Oh, then this M line, right? So at the center of, of the myosin, um, it's kind of anchored together by a protein. And we end up referring to that as the M line. The Z line as well, which is holding all the, the actin from adjacent sarcomeres together, would also be considered a stabilizing protein. Regulatory proteins, we're going to see right here on the actin, right? So actin here is kind of the pink, the pearls. Laying over the active sites is a regulatory protein called tropomyosin. And tropomyosin's job is to block the active sites. It prevents actin and myosin from binding 
until we're ready for contraction. So we'll talk about that more when we get into the actual process. Attached to tropomyosin, this is crazy, there's a lot going on here. Attached to tropomyosin, we have another regulatory protein called troponin. And troponin, um, it kind of ends up, it's got like three, it looks like a snowman to me, right? But it's kind of this three globular proteins put together, but it has a calcium binding site. So it binds to calcium and then is actually gonna pull tropomyosin off of those binding sites. So these are considered regulatory proteins, right? Because they're gonna tell us when we can contract and when we can't, while things like actin and myosin are going to do the actual contraction, right? And then things like titan, our Z line, our M line are all proteins that are just trying to kind of keep everyone adjacent uh, in the correct uh, forms, right, or the correct uh, orientations, and so those are considered um, stabilizing proteins. Okay, so that's kind of what's making up our sarcomere. Now, the sarcomere, this is an actual microscopic image, so it's actually possible um, to see this. And the way it appears when you're under a microscope you get this um, repeating bat pattern of dark bands, light bands, dark bands, light bands, right? And so these all have names. And then this cartoon picture kind of helps you see what's actually in that region of the sarcomere. So when we think about striations, it's this alternating light band, dark band. The light band is called the I band. It actually stands for, I think, isotropic, um, which means nothing to you, right? But it's lighter, more light is coming through in the microscope. The A band is anisotropic, it's not letting the light through, and we call that the dark band. The only way I have found to remember this is the I band, there's an I in light and an A in dark, right? And so those are alternating, that's what gives you um, striations. Now, what's in these? In the I band, right, notice what we have here. In pink, that was our actin. Green's the, the titan, the stabilizing. But really, what we're looking at in the I band is actin. Which is annoying that it starts with an A. I can't help you. Maybe, if it helps, maybe, then don't even call it actin. Call it the thin filament. Okay, um, and so anyway, the thin filaments, since they're not as thick, more light is coming through, right? So just actin. The A band, then, is where we see myosin, or myosin and, see the overlap here? There's actin in there as well, but the A band only goes as far as that myosin does. So I'm going to just put, and some actin, right, when they're overlapping. All right, so A bands and I bands. Um, a couple other things that you'll see here, right? And you can actually see this on uh, microscopic imaging, right? If we look at this A band, right, right down the middle, we do have that M line, right? And that M line was just securing the various myosin uh, filaments, right? We have, in our A band, areas where actin and myosin are overlapped. They call that the zone of overlap. And then anywhere where there's not overlap, they refer to that as the H band, right? So the M line is inside the H band, which is inside of the A band, right? Okay, you'll get it. Just a little bit of practice here. Um, in the I band, right, do notice we do have that Z that Z line, and it's actually shaped like a Z, so that's at least helpful there, right? And then also I mentioned these green squigglies are the, the titan. 
Now, what ends up happening is when we think about muscle actually shortening, none of these filaments actually shorten. It's the overlap between them that increases, right? And so picture if this zone of overlap is less, right? The, uh, da, 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 how do I say this? The size of the A band never changes, right? It is the width of those myosin heads or the width of the myosin. But the zone of overlap determines how big the I band is, right? So if this pulls apart, we're actually gonna get much more space maybe where there's just actin, the I band is bigger, right? But then contraction takes place, this overlap increases, and that is how muscle shortens is by thousands of these tiny units. They're each like two micrometers, right? Impossibly small, overlapping more. But if you have thousands of them overlapping more, that is, as odd as it sounds, that is muscular contraction. Okay, so that is kind of the nitty gritty small stuff in a muscle. I like this image because it kind of recaps where we were, right? So a skeletal muscle, right, an entire muscle covered in its epimyceum contains multiple fascicles. When we look at that fascicle, right, it had the perimyceum connective tissue, all the nerves and blood vessels, right? And it is full of muscle fibers. The muscle fiber is the individual cell, right? Covered in its endomyceum. And within that muscle cell, we see all the myofibrils, the bundles of actin and myosin. Here's our myofibril. They've cut back a little bit of the cellular content. So you can see the sarcoplasmic reticulum and the, the T tubules, but we see the underlying um, overlap between actin and myosin that is described in a sarcomere.